Bring in the anchor of Special Report, Brett Baer. Brett, we are awaiting any moment now some sound from Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader. As soon as we have it uh, ready for you, we'll play it. But in the meantime, let me get your thoughts because it's very rare that a president goes on a foreign trip, returns, and then the storyline still the next day is his foreign trip. Well, that's right. Dana, it was a, a big deal, and I don't think it's going to go away for a couple of days. You know, just to, to follow up on Senator Sass, there'll be people out there who say, oh, of course, Ben Sass is ripping on the president's press conference. But it's not just Ben Sass or Lindsey Graham or Bob Corker or Jeff Flake, traditional voices that may be, uh, you know, raise concerns about something the president said. When Newt Gingrich, former House Speaker, says he must clarify his statements, it's the most serious mistake of his mm -hmm. presidency, and it must be corrected immediately, you have a problem and a cleanup on aisle five that yeah. may need and it's be, not to a be personal, made today. And I don't think any of the criticism was a personal uh, attack on the president, but let's listen. I, I have that sound now from Mitch McConnell's first time we're hearing this and hearing from him. Watch. We believe the European Union uh, countries are our friends, and uh, the Russians are not. Uh, they've demonstrated that in all the obvious ways over the last few years. The annexation of Crimea, the invasion of eastern Ukraine, not to mention the indisputable evidence that they tried to impact the 2016 election. Brett, any president has the ability to set foreign policy for the United States, and Congress can try to be a check on it, and they can see if they can do something through the judiciary. But any commander in chief, they have the ability to do that. And I, I think that what you're seeing here is some members of Congress is reacting. But do you think that Mitch McConnell will go as far as Senator Schumer suggests and actually hold hearings on the summit? There'll be calls. I don't know if McConnell will be one of them calling, but you can see by his statement that it's concerning to uh, lawmakers up there. And there has to be some distance between what the president said in that news conference and what they're saying uh, collectively or going back to their districts. Just to give you a physical example, these are three papers that usually give favorable headlines to the president. Here's the Washington Times. Trump sides with Putin over intel. Here's the Wall Street Journal. Trump questions Russian meddling. And here's the New York Post. President gives big bear hug to wicked BFF Vlad, jabs U.S. intel, see no evil. Now, usually those headlines, fairly positive in those papers. Uh, not today. And that means that the president in this 2 o'clock, whatever time he's going to do it, Any is probably now. going to have to say something. I also noted this poll yesterday out of, out of Russia. It's interesting about Vladimir Putin. You know, any world leader, if they have a world stage meeting, they're playing to their domestic audience. Vladimir Putin is in a little bit of trouble at home, even though, of course, we know that the elections aren't necessarily free and fair. But... In March of 2018, he was at 68 percent approval. He has since put forward some proposals, including raising the retirement age. He's down at 49 percent approval, and you can imagine that probably vexes him a little bit. Um, what do you think about that in, in terms of the lift that Putin may have gotten from that summit yesterday internally? Oh, he was clearly the biggest winner yesterday, Dana. I mean, it, it you know, lifted him up uh, next to President Trump. Uh, the fact that there was that moral equivalence of, you know, he was very strong, the president said. Now, the president's supporters will say that he gets hit all the time for every single thing he says, and that if he walked on water, uh, they would say he couldn't swim in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, but yesterday was different. Yesterday, crossed a line with an adversary, and that's why you're seeing even supporters come out and say there needs to be some, some cleanup on this. Well, he is going to do a little bit of that. He's going to have a meeting today with some members of Congress. They want to talk about tax cuts 2.0, and he's invited some vulnerable Republicans uh, that are you know, tough House races or they're running for a larger office. Um, so we will hear from him on that, and we will check back with you on Special Report at 6 p.m. Never miss it. Thanks, Brett. All right, Dana. See you.